the union of every condition brings man right back to God. He does not need to attain. He is God. That is wholeness of principle. The materiality of illusion is that which gets us into all kinds of difficulty and strife. In that complete unification of principle in man, we rise out of objectification entirely as we know objectification. There is a pure manifestation of God, but it is not a material or limited objectification. It is a state of consciousness, expression of all that principle is. But there is not the slightest degree of separation or limitation. It is like a ray of light among innumerable rays of light, which all together make the light that is universal. But each ray is light. The statement, I am God, accompanied by the realization of what is truly involved in it, will heal any condition instantly. If you realize it and see nothing but that truth, only that truth can manifest. In treating yourself or another, you see and declare only the eternal unity with God. That light comes forth instantly, for it is the true light, and then we know that unity is in existence within ourselves and within everybody else. It is all accomplished. That is the Christ light, the Christ principle. This eliminates the theory that it is necessary to do any specific work on the glands, on body centers, upon the body itself, or to treat disease as you state it. The physical will fall into line as soon as we realize that fundamental unity. When this state is reached, the glands and all bodily functions are stimulated until they become harmonious. Every atom of the body is stimulated and aroused to action in perfect coordination with the spirit. It is the spirit that quickens. You cannot raise the bodily action into accord with spirit by the processes of mind, for the spirit is above the mind as the heavens are high above the earth. The Ten Commandments are not the objectified law of God at all. In them, Moses tried to lay down a law for mental and moral conduct, but there is no such conduct outside the law of the spirit and the consciousness of the activity of spirit must be discerned as the only governing law. The statement, as you stand one with law, you will not do these things, was the original intent, but has been translated, thou shalt not. If you are within the law of harmony, you will not produce discord, but to merely refrain from producing discords does not place you within the law of harmony. To refrain from discord merely involves doing nothing at all, and surely this never would produce a magician, nor would it express harmony. The active doing of the law produces effects commensurate with the law. Life is active, dynamic, and not static. It is doing truth, not merely refraining from that which is not truth. If you are in obedience to the law itself, you will automatically refrain from doing certain things which are not included in the natural operation of the law. You do not do these things if you follow the law, but in omitting these things you may not fulfill the law at all, but only obey your own notions. Thou shalt not was the Mosaic law as Moses gave it out. These were the emanations of the Seraphirot, S-E-P-H-I-R-O-T-H, or the tree of life. He veiled that fact and objectified it for the people, but gave the priest the real meaning in the Talmud, T-A-L-M-U-D. When God spoke to Moses, in a loud voice, as it is given, it was not intended to convey the fact that he spoke with much noise. God is a sound voice, which brings light into expression. That was Moses' statement, a sound voice, not a voice of sound. 
there is an important difference. If we have a sound voice, that voice is one and will be bring light into existence. It gives us that power. It may be out of noise completely or what we would designate as soundless. And that is what we are coming to today, the soundlessness of sound. Then it is beyond noise completely and you can pay no attention to noise because you are in sound voice or definite principle. Soundness is wholeness. And when God spoke in a sound voice, he spoke in the completeness of himself. It is like we often say of a person, he put his whole self into what he said. It is only when the entire nature is aroused and operative that the voice is sound or that we speak with soundness. We do not speak partially or in any separateness, but in complete oneness. When God said to Moses, I am that I am, and beside me there is no other, he was speaking in a sound voice, for he excluded nothing from his proclamation, but moved as a complete unit. This is particularly illuminating regarding the discarded psychological ideal that the mind is a sectional or, or departmental thing made up of many operations. This is the hypnotic, no, this is the hypnotism of unsoundness. The more differentiated, the more unsound becomes the mind. Study some of the people who are given to this departmental function of the mind, concentrating here and there and moving their minds about one section at a time. They are extremely unsound and are never safe within themselves, nor are they safe to follow, for they lead only into confusion. It may be a good way to build up a large following for a group of people who are unsound mentally or easily herded into organizations. But this ultimately becomes the greatest bondage, particularly to the one who thus deceives the people. Soundness is wholeness. Oneness. I am God, spoken in the consciousness that you are one with the all, and that the all is centered within you, and that you move with and are included in the operation of the whole, is the only truly sound statement, for it is complete. No structure is stable unless it becomes a unit, and no man is stable until he is a complete unit in and with the principle. We cannot stop in our progress with organizations and systems, either orthodox or metaphysical, for they are sectional, sectarian, and teach a doctrine that is more or less involved with the ideals of separations. They are only steps in the process of man's discovery of himself. We cannot stop at any point without becoming orthodox. That prevents further progress until we break away. That is where so many people become mixed in affirmations and denials. Of course, many modern thought organizations become mixed up in that very thing when they begin to deny. They fasten to themselves a condition which does not exist, and then when they feel this false influence of their own mental reaction, they call it malicious animal magnetism they begin to get into psychic influences again, being held there by their repetitions. One is really not working properly when he denies. Denial separates us from spirit, for we stop to consider something that we designate as not spirit. In spirit, there is no separation, and consequently, it is only man's separation through which he becomes involved in the psychic or phenomenal. Moses classified anything and everything in phenomena as a separation from spirit. The Orthodox churches evidently get into trouble because they allow a separation. They have built up a great image in the heavens, calling it God. There is a psychic determination there which they see, believing that this image talked to them, instead of which it was their own voice talking to them through psychic influences. The voice of God speaks within man as Jesus taught. It is the Father within. 